Hi, and welcome to In The Word TV. I'm Shayla Crow, and this is Larry Cook, and we are visiting you from Houston, Texas today. And we're glad to be with you yes. today. We're excited about the Word of God, what God's doing in our world today, uh, even though in, we know there's a lot of confusion <laughs> in the world and a lot of fear and worry about the times that we're in. But we got a God that's incredible. I'm excited about what He's doing. And we're doing something new. We're, we're uh, filming different than we were yes. before. We're, we're trying some new things in life. And and uh, this has been a year of transition. We've been sure. discussing sure. lately that uh, uh, a lot of changes going on. And we're excited about it. Or I'm excited about it. Yes, I, I, I definitely <laughs> would say transition is the word of the hour. Lots of things. I think we talked about this um, before in a conversation we had, just fluid. We have to be fluid because things are changing all around us. Well, it, and it's good to, to uh, be challenged yeah. and change challenges you. Uh, I'm a creature of habit. I, <laughs> I kind of like things to be consistent and knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. I know what Monday's going to do and Tuesday and Wednesday will look like, but now I have no idea. Right. Uh, yeah, everything is changing, so... Uh, it's a good thing. Right. It's a good thing because right. now I'm challenged to, to figure out how to how to make it work, and uh, even this program we're doing now, uh, it's going to be going to be different. Yes. So, but uh, as a matter of fact, I might just stick with this for a few minutes and yep. and and, and kind of work with the idea of transition because it's really weird how we do get into routines and and uh, doing the same thing over and over and over and. As Christians, it's, it's it's real easy just to go to church, do church, yeah. go home, go Wednesday night, do the same thing, and and just get in a habit. And uh, matter of fact, we talked this morning at church about about prayer, how it can become just a routine or a habit that you're just I'm praying, but I'm not really talking to God right. anymore. You know, you just yeah. get caught up in doing the. The, the same basic thing, you know, Lord, I need this. Lord, bless them. Lord, help us. And you really didn't talk to God at all. Right. And until, and then if some tragedy <laughs> happens or something really right. changes, now we're going to talk to God. Right. <laughs> now it's time to say, Lord Jesus, I need help. I need answers, which uh, is, is a good thing. Right. To draw us back. Well, and I just think human nature, it's so easy to fall into, I think, a lackadaisical Christianity, you know, and sometimes it is just because we're so used to just a religious routine of it. And I think sometimes it's just the hustle and bustle of our everyday humanity life that we yeah. just, you know, we put prayer in a, in a certain system, I guess, you know, right. without really without really being intentional about drawing near to the relationship with Jesus, you know, so it, it, it is, um, I feel like we definitely are in a season where God is calling the church to yeah. really yeah. Um, press in, in the middle of these uncertainties and transitions, you know, um, just press into him, really, yeah. what, well, into his presence. I'm challenged, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, at, at our, our house, we, we pray, but it's just kind of like I said, even at the house, yeah. it's routine. At church, it's routine. Yeah. And, and. We were studying today that, you know, the foundation of the church has always been prayer. Yeah. That that fellowship with God, that community with God, that, that He's the center of what we do. And we talk to God and not talk at God. Right. And we so often get caught up in just telling God what we need, what we want, instead of really spending time with the Father and, and knowing Him and listening. I think that's probably the hardest part. It's right. easy to throw up some prayers. I need, I want, help me. But but to stop and say, God, what do you want? Right. What are you saying in this time? And and this is where for me over the last month or so with all the transition going on, you know, staying in flux with everything, uh, it's, it's really challenged me to step back and, okay, what are you saying, Lord? Right. What's going on? Because my ministry has been go to jail, go to this jail, go to the mission, go to the homeless shelter, go do this. And, and just every week I know exactly yeah. what's going to happen. And I kind of know what I'm going to say. And I study and, I, you know, it's just routine. Even studying routine. 
Yeah. 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 Certain day, certain time. Yeah. You know, it's, I need 30 minutes worth of sermon yeah. or some <laughs> kind of thing, you know, instead of just spending time with God yeah. for hours and saying, what are we doing here? What's the point? What, what are we trying to accomplish? And so I, I don't know what's going on in your life today out, out in, in the audience, but I pray that God will challenge you or you will seek to be challenged, to do something you hadn't done before. And because when you start hearing the voice of God and, and bring such peace, even in the middle of, of confusion and sure. tragedy, when, yeah. when God starts speaking, it's like, I know we're going through some crazy stuff, but God said he's got a plan, yeah. that he has an answer. And, and I know that my wife and I have been going through this and talking about well, what are we going to do next? How's it going to work next? And when it's just us talking about it, we don't have an answer. Right. Like, <laughs> like, <"Why?" laughs> right. A lot of confusion still about where we're going. Right. But but then when we really spend time with God and we seek God, as, as the Word says, just, just to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your yeah. own understanding. Acknowledge Him, and He will guide or direct your path. And, and that's what we need, and, and we need that constant uh, uh, motivation by the Lord. Right. And so uh, I'm really kind of, I'm, I'm excited that we're being challenged, that we're being stretched in this time. And, and Shayla and I have been working at Sally's House Women's Center and some different places. And all of a sudden those doors are, are closing and new doors are opening and it's like, what are we going to do right. now? Well, and I think, I think um, as you're talking, I'm having a couple of different thoughts. One of the things that I think about is, um, you know, in our, in our house where we attend church, our, our church home, um, prayer is what we call load-bearing beam, you know. And, and when you have those load-bearing beams, if those aren't solid foundations, then everything else is kind of temperamental, you know. And so I think it is just that reminder. But I was also just hearing the scripture even as we were talking of, you know, the Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you've never known. And I think so many times we've talked about this before in previous segments, we have, we have expectancy and there's expectation, you know, and that expectation of what we think is supposed to happen, how we think it's supposed to happen, um, you know, versus just an expectancy that God is good, that he follows through with what his word says he's going to going to do and that we can trust him in the midst of the changes and you know the last thing while you were talking that I had this picture of which again I think that we've shared this before in in different situations but you know um, in those moments if we aren't in relationship and fellowship you know and that's what I think about when I think about just really prayer and intercession is that constant fellowship and relationship with the Lord you know then we do have a tendency to look look in that rear view mirror at the awesome things that God maybe did before yeah. or even things that weren't so good. But I know for the body, a lot of times what I find is we're looking back and, and we rest on our laurels and then we struggle with the new thing that God wants to yeah. do. And we, you know, we have heard it over and over and over this word of it's a new era. God's doing a new thing. And so, you know, I just think that we have to remember the power of prayer and intercession in that is that opportunity, like you said, not just to talk to the Lord, but also listen, listen to what he's saying, because I believe God's doing not just the next thing, but a new thing, you know? And, well, and just in case you've been praying and God <laughs> hadn't spoken, yeah, that's another part yes. of it that's kind of like, wait a minute, I'm praying, I'm seeking God, I'm waiting, I hear nothing. Right. So this is happening for them and then, but here I am. Yeah, why isn't God talking to me? And if you're not real careful about your relationship with God, you'll take that as as God's not listening or God doesn't care or I'm in sin or I've messed up. But but I found out sometimes God just wants me to be still. Yeah. Know that He's God. Uh how do you, how do you know that you trust God without a test? You can't go to school. And, and this, would, this would be really dumb if a kid went through all of 12 grades of school <laughs> and never took any kind of test. Yeah. And at the end, somebody said, what do you know? I don't know what I know. Right. I've never been tested. I, I have no clue if I learned anything or not, really. 
And so the tests show you where you are in your relationship. And so sometimes when we go through these challenges, because I know Shelly and I, my wife, we've been praying about some of these things and praying and waiting on God, seeking God. It's like, hello. Still waiting. <laughs> hello. <laughs> are you there, Lord? I know you are. Uh, and, and, it, and it tests your faith. Do you really trust God? Do you believe God's going to show up? And sure enough, maybe even with some of the things we've been praying about, it's been several months that we've been waiting and trying to figure out what, what to do next. And and all of a sudden, something opens up and we go, oh, that's it. Yeah. That's what that's what we were waiting on. But but the timing that God has and and the test of our faith to see if we really trust okay. him and really believe uh, is, is it's really it's challenging. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to lighten that load because it's hard. Yeah. When you're really needing an answer and it's not coming, now. you feel like the, the, there's a stone wall between you and, and God and why, why isn't it working? But that's just part of, of the relationship with God is learning to trust and, and just keep moving forward and not letting down. Because we do have an enemy yeah. that would love to, to bring confusion to us and tell us that we're not going to make it and that God's not faithful. You know, that's been, a big one. been the thing that the, the enemy's always done yeah. is try to let us know that, well, God's not going to come through. You're going to fail. And there's always that other voice. And even through other people sometimes, when it looks bad, they'll come alongside. And, yep, it yeah, really does look well, bad for you. <laughs> you <yeah. know? laughs> and, and tell you that was a stupid thing to do. How are you going to work this out? Or how's it going to happen? And you go, I don't know. Right. I'm trusting God. And, and they go, well, how can you trust? What did God tell you? Nothing. Right. <laughs> you know, nothing. And and sometimes we, you know, as Christians, we look really dumb when it comes to trying to, to explain or to, to tell them what we're doing or why we're doing it. And the good news is, though, God always comes through. Yeah. You know, I know when we read the Bible and we see Jesus telling the disciples to go get in the ship, to go to the other side, he'll catch up later, and they get in the boat. Jesus wasn't surprised they weren't going anywhere. The storm came, and, and they weren't moving. They're rowing and rowing and not going anywhere. The winds are contrary to blowing against them. And, and Jesus just walks out on the water, yeah. and he said he was passing them. <laughs> I guess they always got rowing and Jesus passed them. And they were like, What's what? going on? Yeah. You know, they were confused. But Peter knew to call out on the Lord. He said, Lord, is that you? If it is, tell me to come. And and that's kind of the way we got to get sometimes when we don't know what's going on. It doesn't look good. The storm's going. And Jesus is coming here. Jesus is here. And we need to be res uh, responsible to call on him yes. and to know that he will come through in the middle of that storm. And we can trust him. So, so I, I like I said, we're kind of going off a little bit from where I wanted to go today. We'll get into another subject later. But I really want you to know that you can trust God today in your prayer life, and you need to spend time in prayer. Uh, everything you read, as a matter of fact, Jesus taught us how to pray. Jesus, it must have been important that Jesus yeah. thought, I need to teach you how to pray. You need to know what kind of uh, relationship you have with God. And then, uh, as you watch all through the, the time that Jesus was on earth, that he would go off by himself and pray, that he spent time, even Jesus spent a lot of time with the Father, getting alone and getting quiet and, and listening to God and getting direction. And then when Jesus uh, went to, back to heaven, died, rose again, uh, the disciples, they went to an upper room and prayed. They didn't do anything until they had prayed. They spent time in prayer. And when they spent that time, it says, and the Spirit of God came upon them and, and moved them to do, well, they changed the world. Yeah. You know, it, was, that was, it came out of the prayer life. And if you'll study revivals uh, all through history, they always come out of people getting to that place. And it's a shame, it's usually that place of tragedy yeah. and the place of where it seemed like the whole world is, is going to pot. And 
going to pot. Yeah, today that does, <laughs> today that sounds kind of weird. You know, you look at California, Colorado, and everybody's going to pot. But it <laughs> and the world's gone there, so we got to pray. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how I got off that. <laughs> Help me out. I love it. <laughs> well, and out. I'm thinking too, just as we were talking about just praying. You know, we're strengthening our inner man. It's so important, just our our spirit, our soul, and our body. But just really, just um, that prayer and supplication just really um, strengthening our, our inner man, you know, um, that way we can be ready. We were know, designed have peace. for that relationship yeah. with God. And, yeah. and that's, I think that's partly why people are so miserable today because since we're designed to be with God yeah. and we don't know God, man, it's just a big we're missing. Be confused. Right. And I think too, just even the, the, um, well, sometimes not realizing just how not not weak, but how unwilling we are, we are. You know, we can pray for a minute, but you know, not really pray. Not that we have to conjugate up some special prayer or intercession, but really, you know, you were just mentioned in passing a minute ago about revivals, and I just think, are we a people that would be willing to truly seek the face of God and listen to the voice of God and be in relationship with the, with God? Every, all throughout the day with whatever we're doing, you know, and I just think of that being a place of surrender, truly, true surrender, you know, and I'm the mom of three kids. I'm always going, things are always busy, but I constantly find myself just even in jumping in my car, throwing on my seatbelt, praying, you know, so I would just want to encourage you that, you know, you don't have to be the best, the loudest, the longest, uh, you know, person when it comes to praying, but really it's about having a relationship with Jesus and, Really not like Larry said earlier, not just um, being willing to talk to God, but also being willing to listen because we're in an hour where God does want to speak to his people and we have yeah. to be quick to hear and obey. Yeah. Well, I, I get frustrated sometimes because even in the church, years ago, churches, Wednesday night was usually a prayer, prayer night. night. That, yep. was, that was what it was. We just yep. get for an hour or two and just pray. Pray and yeah. seek God and cry out to God, even even for loved ones and yeah. lost people, to spend hours uh, talking to God about Him, calling on God to heal. And and most churches today don't have any yeah. time set aside for prayer, and we wonder why the church seems weak today. Yeah. And and I really believe it's because of prayer. And and it can start with you today. Yes. You can start something in your church. You can create something in your church. I had a church I went to years ago in Sealy, Texas, and, and it struck me one day that, you know, everybody was coming into church uh, and just talking and gathering and waiting for the church to start. And yeah. about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it's just loud and noise, and everybody <laughs> talking. Oh, we're coming into the house of God. Yeah. Matter of fact, the Lord called it the house of prayer. So it should be some pray go, prayer yeah. going on. And so I gathered some of the men together, and I said, well, I want to do something. And I said, but we need to start this. Somebody has to start yeah, it. Yeah, start somewhere. And we would go in before church gets started, be the first ones there, go down to the altar and pray. And then when people came in, all of a sudden there was already an atmosphere yeah, of prayer it. there. And so they would come in and see us praying. Well, they were, you know, if they talked, it was whispering now, and it wasn't it's just, okay. just random. And and it really brought and changed the atmosphere uh, of the church and the mm -hmm. church service when when we created that place that we invited God in. We wanted God to be a part. We don't want to just come go through the motion yeah. of church. Yeah. And so it might be you uh, that are watching a day to say, "You God wants me to do that." Well, if you're right feeling up, some push sometimes. right now, it's you. Yeah. And God wants you to get up and go and talk to your pastor and talk to your elders. We're not praying like we need to. We need a prayer meeting. We don't need just a bunch more teaching. Yeah. We need a, a, a more relationship with the Father. And so, uh, so I'm encouraging you today to step it up. Yes. Let's do it. Let's yeah. move God uh, through our prayers. Let's move His heart. To, to, for a revival, for our churches to grow up, and and for God to move. Like I mean, we need a, an awakening. Yes. We need a yes. revival, and it's not going to happen just because we want it. It's going to happen because we do something that creates an atmosphere that God can come do a revival in. Yeah. 
I don't even think some churches would know if a revival passed. They, they're too busy to have one uh, to, to see God move. Right, right. So let's pray. Yes. And uh, would, would you mind praying us out and yeah, praying for the for people sure. today? So, Lord, we just thank you today, God. And we just say intercessors rise up right thank now you. in Jesus' name, even at the sound mm. of my voice. Holy Thank Spirit, you, you are welcome here. And every great, single great. person that sees this, even at the sound of my voice, I thank you for a move of your spirit, God. And we thank you that this is an hour where people are hungry, yes. hungry to be in true relationship with you. And yeah. so we thank yes. you, God, for the intercessors, Lord. I thank you for people that would be steadfast, that they would um, have the endurance, Lord, to, to go to just make it through the long run, yes. Father, yes. of what you're calling us to do in this hour, Lord that we would seek your face, God, and turn from our wicked ways and that you would hear us, God, and yeah. heal our land. Yeah. So I thank, thank you, you, God, Father. right now, Lord, thank that you. we would just begin to have a stirring wherever you are right now, there would be a stirring and a passion and a hunger for prayer and intercession in Jesus' yeah. name. Thank you. Father. Amen. Well, we just thank you for watching today. We believe you're going to be blessed. Yes. We just encourage you today and keep tuning in. Yes, God bless you. And you can find us on ITW Space TV. Talk to you soon.